Hello athletes and welcome to the Toyota USA Triathlon Age Group National Championships pre-race webinar. My name is Brian D'Amico and I will be the race director for the event. As I go through these slides, these are meant to educate you on some key happenings for the event. All this information is also listed online on the website as well as will be covered in the pre-race briefing which will take place on Friday before the event. First and foremost, touching on the USA Triathlon Events app, if you haven't downloaded this app, it is downloadable on both the App Store and the Android app on Google Play. Um, this is an extremely useful tool that not only you can use as an athlete um, at the venue, but also family, spectators, whether they're local to the venue or at home to track you. Um, the next slide will kind of go into all those specific details. Um, if you do have any questions regarding the app, there is a, a pretty comprehensive FAQ page um, at the website listed below um, that will really dive into everything and answer any questions that you may have. In terms of specific main app features, I'll just touch high level on these. Uh, you can track yourself and other participants. When you, do do, when you do do this tracking, this is an estimation of tracking based off of where you are on the course relative to which time you match you cross over and then your pace on the course. So these won't be official, um, but it should give a pretty good indication as to where you are on the course for, for families and spectators that are tracking you throughout the race. You can track multiple people as well and receive push notifications when they cross specific time you match. Additionally, you can register for race updates. So this will be push notifications sent to your phone as well as Facebook. Facebook and Twitter notifications, things as such as when the expo is open, the pack of pickup tent is open, post-race food being served, when the race goes off, and any other relevant event details. If there are any weather notifications as well, we'll push those, throughout, those out through this same means of platform also. Additionally, the overall race results and current leaderboard, again, these are unofficial. Um, this is pre-penalties being added to the race. Hopefully, we'll have a minimum amount of penalties, as well as pertinent information and schedules relative to the event. General top line for schedule of events. So, packet pickup will begin on Thursday, August 8th from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Edgewater Park, which is the main location of the race. This will be happening in the registration tent. On Friday, August 9th, we'll have an open water swim competition packet pickup. This will be from 9.30 to 10.45 a.m. at the Edgewater Park Beach at Swim Start. One important note on this, this is different than the swim familiarization that will take place from 11.20 to 1 p.m. You must pre-register for the open water swim competition, and that will begin at 11 o'clock a.m. Again, for open water swim competition packet pickup, that will take place at Swim Start from 9.30 to 10.45 with 11 a.m. race start. Concurrently on Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. will be packet pickup and expo as well as mandatory bike check-in for Olympic distance only. Again, this is a mandatory check-in for all Olympic distance athletes between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. As I alluded to previously, from 11.20 to 1 p.m. will be swim practice for both Olympic and sprint distance athletes. Just note the course that will be set will be for sprint distance only. At 2 o'clock p.m., myself and our Commissioner of Officials, Deb Wilson, will be leading the rules briefing at Cleveland Public Auditorium. And then immediately following that, we'll have a speaker, A.J. Baco, who's a professional triathlete, um, speaking about race mentality, nutrition, um, and, and really race day thoughts that go through your head beginning at 3 p.m. And we anticipate that to be about a 30-minute session with him leading off the session and then the Q&A immediately following. At 6.30 p.m., the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission will be hosting the Sunset Sprint 5K that you must pre-register for. Um, this is linked on our website as well. Um, they will also be offering on-site sign-up both throughout the week um, and then on Saturday, um, I'm sorry, on Friday prior to the actual race taking place. One important thing to note is that there will be no swimming permitted in Lake Erie during race days outside of your scheduled race time and scheduled swim warm-up times. For that said swim warm-up and then for the open water swim competition, again, you must have pre-registered for that open water swim competition, which is a 750 meter swim. You must wear your event issued swim cap during that swim warm-up. Schedule of events, I won't go through all the specific ways, but rather just the first top line inf information for each of these. Transition will open at 4.45 a.m. with a closure at 6.40 p.m. During this time from 7.30 to 4 o'clock p.m., the race day expo will be open with select vendors open at 5.30 a.m. Additionally, bike support will be located just northeast of the expo area and they will also be situated in transition for any race morning needs that you may have. They'll be there again prior to transition opening all throughout the day as well. They'll also be offering on-course support, which I'll touch upon in a few later slides. 
The first wave will start at 6.50 a.m. with waves following anywhere between 6 and 20 minutes after based off of calculations that we've done on course density to reduce penalties on course and making the race safe for everyone. In terms of swim warm-up, the way it will be structured is the first wave will be able to enter the water at approximately 6.35 once all the on water assets are in place. As soon as that happens, wave two will follow, so it will be done on a rotating basis. So you'll be given approximately five to seven minutes from a swim warm-up standpoint. So as soon as wave one and wave two enter the water, they'll enter the water at the same time to allow adequate time for their swim warm-up. As soon as wave one goes off, wave two will slide over to the start, wave three will slide over to the swim warm-up area, and so on and so forth. So that will be structured the entirety of the day with, with Tim announcing which waves are then set to enter the water. All the waves are pre-staged behind the swim start arch. Um, note that you will cross over a timing mat upon going under that swim start arch. That will not start your time. Your time will start on the gun start at your pre-described wave start time. So that'll be your official start time. Everyone must go under that swim start arch. That helps us with swimmer accountability based off of crossing the mat, knowing that you will then be entering the water. If by any chance you decide not to race, it's extremely, extremely important to make sure you find a staff member. There'll be plenty of staff members at Swim Start. Tell them you're not racing. We will then record your number and pull your chip. Again, just based off of swimmer accountability. So I can't stress this enough how important this is, um, just to make sure that this is done um, on a basis to ensure safety for all those athletes as well as our staff as well. Again, first wave will start at 6.50 with the last Olympic distance wave going off at 9.06 a.m., which will be wave 18, females 40 through 44. Continuing specified cutoff distances for both swim and bike, as, as soon as the last bike is in and off the course, we will open that bike checkout for all athletes. We anticipate this to be at about 11.45 a.m. If it hits 11.25 and the last athlete is in for the bike, we will open up bike checkout um, immediately at that time. The course will close in its entirety at 1.05 p.m. We'll also be offering late packet pickup for sprint distance only from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. We will have spring sprint swim practice powered by aftershocks beginning at 3 o'clock p.m. Again, this will just be the sprint distance course, and the course will be set as it would be on race day. Sprint bike check-in, that is a mandatory check-in for sprint distance athletes from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m., with the USA Triathlon Town Hall meeting taking place from 4.15 to 5 o'clock at Cleveland Public Auditorium, and then immediately following the Olympic Distance Award Ceremony from 5.15 to 6.45 p.m. Shifting to Sunday, August 11th, beginning at 4.45 and closing at 6.40 will be transition open and close time. There'll be 12 waves for sprint distance, with the first wave beginning at 6.50 and the last wave going off at 8.20 a.m. Similar to Olympic distance, warm-up will be structured in the same way. So at approximately 6.35 a.m., we will let wave one and wave two into the water. Wave one will warm up in the swim start area between the two large yellow banana buoys. Wave two will warm up to the west of those banana buoys. As soon as wave one goes off, wave two will slide over to the swim start area. Wave three will then slide into the swim warm-up area, and then it will be a cascading effect from there on out. Race Day Expo will also be open on Sunday the 11th for the sprint distance races. Cutoff times are listed here as well. The bike cutoff will be 10.45 a.m. Again, similar to before, we anticipate that bike checkout to take place approximately the same time. If there are only a handful of athletes out on course, we will mitigate them coming into transition and you being able to check your bikes out a little early if there are only a handful of bikes out on the course. The biggest thing from our end, we don't want to affect people that are still racing their actual race in lieu of getting people into transition five to 10 minutes early. The course will close at 11.45 a.m. Cutoff time for penalty discussion will be in the official's tent at Edgewater Park, um, just east of the expo area with the sprint distance awards being from one o'clock to 2.30 p.m. This is specific for all athletes that are doing the double. Um, if you have signed up for Olympic distance and you qualified, we would love for you to also race, race the sprint distance. And we've tried to make this as easy as possible, the transition from Bike check-in on Friday night for Olympic distance, racing Saturday for Olympic distance, and then the check-in for Sunday. So, again, it's a mandatory bike check-out for all Olympic distance athletes. Again, this is specific for those that are doing the double. For those athletes also competing in that sprint distance race the following day on Sunday, 
you have two different options. So the first option is to remove your biking gear from a lifting distance TA your rack position, and then we'll have uh, a set of open racking on the back side of transition in the, in the last row. So this will be closest to the parking lot. You can only leave your bike, your gear must go with you. So if you do choose to do that, again, you will need to go in and, and physically move your bike. Our staff and officials and volunteers won't do this for you. But once you've re-racked your bike in an open racking position on Saturday upon the conclusion of your race, you have two options. So you can return Saturday when sprint distance check-in opens from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Re-rack your bike in the rack position that has your sprint distance number on it and make sure you apply that sprint distance number onto your bike. Or you may arrive Sunday morning when transition is open to re-rack your bike in the position that has your sprint distance number. Important to note, if you do not re-rack your bike in your designated location, that will be issued, you'll be issued a penalty. So extremely important that you decide one of these two options and make sure you follow through on these options to avoid a penalty. Option two is to remove your bike and gear from the Olympic distance transition area and exit transition, and then you can then re-enter during sprint distance bike check-in taking place from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. with your sprint distance number and rack location. Again, a couple of things to keep in mind, if you are doing both races, you'll have a different number for each race, you have different timing chips, so you must change out your Olympic distance race number for your sprint distance number on your helmet, bike, bib, wristband, and tattoos. You'll also be issued a second swim cap for if you are doing both races. Additionally, all numbers are unique to each athlete, there are no duplicates. If you are doing both races, you must remove your Olympic distance number. If you cannot remove it, a simple sport safe marker or Sharpie crossing that number out and reapplying your new number will suffice. Additionally, please ensure that you wear your appropriate swim cap for the appropriate day of racing. Packet pickup, as I alluded to, will be Thursday and Friday, August 8th and 9th at Edgewater Park with late packet pickup for sprint distance only taking place at the race registration tent from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Expo will run concurrently during those same times, and you must have your photo ID and USAT membership card during this time. All athletes will receive their timing chip during packet pickup, so the way packet pickup will work, you'll flow in through the race registration tent, you will then go to your designated table upon checking in at the kiosk with our staff and volunteers. That's where you'll see, you will receive your race packet, complete with bib, race system, swim cap, all those race essentials. You'll then continue westward within that said tent, uh, where you receive your race t-shirt and then finally there'll be two 10 by 10 pop-up tents prior to leaving the race registration compound where you'll be issued your specific timing chip. Those that are racing two races you will receive a timing chip and those will be numbered with your race number corresponding to your race bid for those specific races. Timing chip, just some top line information so they're not transferable so make sure you wear your assigned chip for your assigned race. Additionally, this should be worn around your left ankle prior to starting the race. If it is wetsuit legal, um, please make sure that you don't adhere this timing chip on the outside of your wetsuit leg because once you strip your wetsuit, you're going to strip your timing chip right off. So recommendation is to put that timing chip around your left ankle. You can either pull your wetsuit leg just over that or you can tuck the chip under your wetsuit leg. It'll still register um, with all the timing mats and ins and outs. Upon completion of the race, we'll have volunteers taking those timing chips from you um, and then inventorying those from our side of things. So please make sure once you finish and we'll help accommodate this that your, your timing chip is then turned in. Race site parking information. This is, this is extremely important. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes to cover this. Again, all this information is listed on our website as well. So from Wednesday, August 7th through Friday, August 9th. Parking will be avail available for free on site at Edgewater Park and no shuttle service is available with the one exception which I'll cover on the next slide. Upon entering Edgewater Park, please follow the direction of Metro Parks and USAT parking staff and you'll be directed to park either in the cement lots to the north of the expo area or in the large green space directly adjacent to the expo area. If you're using any sort of map application to get to the venue, this, uh, this address will get you exactly where you need to be. So again, the park is called Edgewater Park and the address is 7800 Cleveland Memorial Shoreway, Cleveland, Ohio 44102. Also very important that overnight parking at Edgewater is strictly prohibited. Race site parking information, so on event days on Saturday and Sunday, and this is for only those that have pre-purchased a parking pass. So those that have pre-purchased a parking pass, those passes have already been mailed to you and those passes are sold out so there will be no additional purchases. 
on-site at Edgewater Park for those that receive parking passes. As I said, you should have received these in the mail. Upon entering the park, please follow the directions of Metro Parks and USAT parking staff will they'll direct you specifically as to where you need to park. You must be into Edgewater Park no later than 6 o'clock a.m. on both Saturday and Sunday mornings, and you will not be able to leave in your vehicle until the bike race is complete as soon as that bike course clears. Following completion of that bike race, the bike portion of the race on both Saturday and Sunday, on-site parking will open up to the general public at no charge. Upon entering, again, please follow the direction of our staff. Again, I can't stress this enough that no overnight parking is prohibited whether you have a parking pass or not at Edgewater Park. This details the parking map. So those that have a parking pass, this is where, you're, where you will initiate your entrance into the park. So to be at the intersection of Detroit and West 73rd Street, you'll then hit a, a parking pass checkpoint, we'll call it, um, at this location here at Father Frascati and West 73rd Street. You'll then be checked. You'll then continue down to the venue where there'll be another, another check upon entering and then staff will then communicate to you exactly where you need to park. Located here at Powerhouse and Father Frascati is the rideshare drop-off and pickup location. And then for those that will be taking the shuttle, which I'll touch on in the next slide, the shuttle pickup and drop-off will be at this location where the white arrow is located. Off-site parking and accompanied shuttle transportation. So those that did not purchase on-site parking, there's free off-site parking available with transport to Edgewater Park on Saturday and Sunday, August 11th. There'll be one caveat to that at the bottom on Friday, which I'll touch on in a couple seconds. Please ensure that you do allow adequate time to load the shuttle bus, the travel time to the venue, which is approximately eight to 10 minutes, and then a short five to seven minute walk to the venue upon being dropped off. Free parking and transportation via shuttle service is available for all athletes and spectators from the North Coast Harbor lot on the north side of First Energy Stadium, which is Cleveland Brown Stadium. People will enter the lot via the entrance booth on the Erie Side Avenue location and park anywhere within the parking grid. They can then proceed to the shuttle buses staged along Erie Side Avenue for transport to Edgewater Park. That North Coast Harbor, Harbor lot is located at 515 Erie Side Avenue, 44114. This lot will open with shuttles starting at 4 o'clock a.m. each morning. If that North Coast Harbor lot is filled to capacity, there'll be an overflow parking lot directly adjacent in the West 3rd Street lot directly southwest of that lot, as I just mentioned. You'll then walk to the North Coast lot for transportation to Edgewater via shuttle bus. Please note that no bikes are permitted on the shuttles. On Saturday and Sunday, from 4 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, the North Coast Harbor lot and the Hilton will initiate those parking shuttles. And on Sunday, from 4 a.m. to 1 p.m., again, there'll be two shuttle services, one from the North Coast Harbor lot and Hilton. Friday is the one one-off. We did not have this last year, but we, we will be implementing this this year. From 3 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. from the Hilton only, shuttle shuttles will run from the Hilton to Edgewater Park and back. To summarize, here are your different shuttle options. So those staying in down ho downtown hotels, you'll have the ability to walk to a pickup point, which is directly adjacent to the Hilton downtown Cleveland. It'll be on the west side on West and East Mall Drive. You'll see approximately 20 School bus, buses stacked up will get you loaded into those school buses and to the venue. Please note that parking at this shuttle location will not be available in the immediate vicinity, so our recommendation is to walk to those pickup points. Like I said, those shuttle buses will be staged on West Mall Drive, directly adjacent to the Hilton downtown Cleveland, and they will transport athletes to Edgewater Park for drop-off and transport it back to the same location on the return trip. Those Hilton, Hilton shuttle times will run on Saturday from 4 a.m. to 2 p.m., Sunday from 4 a.m. to 1 p.m., and then also from Friday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. For all shuttle operations originating from any point, so this would be from the North Coast Harbor lot or from the Hilton, downtown Cleveland, all drop-offs and pickups will be located at one location at, outside of Edgewater Park. This is located next to the intersection of a West 65th Street and Father Caruso Drive. For then further access to Edgewater Park, people will need to proceed through the West 65th Street pedestrian tunnel that leads directly to the heart of Edgewater Park. For suggested ride share drop-off and pickup point, this is Terrestrial Brewing at 7524 Father Frascati Drive. Upon being dropped off here, athletes again will need to proceed to uh, an alternate pedestrian tunnel which is West 73rd and we will have signage there as well. 
For more information, I know I ran through this rather quickly, uh, but all this information is also located by navigating to our Toyota USA Triathlon Age Group National Championships website, clicking on that information, and then navigating then to parking and shuttle information. How do I get my bike to and from Edgewater Park? So again, anyone that did not purchase a parking pass, they are encouraged to utilize the free shuttle at both North Coast Harbor as well as the Hilton Downtown. Again, no bikes are permitted on these. With these constraints, these are some options that athletes have. So for Olympic distance, either drive or ride your bike to the venue for ch bike check-in on Friday, August 9th between 10 o'clock a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Parking is free at the venue and open to anyone on Thursday and Friday. Note that shuttle service is not available on Thursday. We will have that shuttle service on Friday from 3 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. Again, you can, you can ride to the venue and then take the shuttle back. For sprint distance, you may either drive or ride your bike to the venue for bike check-in on Saturday, August 10th from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Again, parking at the venue is free and open to anyone after 12.30 p.m. on Saturday. For athletes doing both sprint and Olympic distance, again, you may re-rack your bike in those open racking positions, but you must re-rack for sprint distance race prior to that start of the race on Sunday. Traveling back downtown for Olympic distance, parking will be free and open to athletes after 12.30 p.m. Athletes may either take the shuttle back to the parking area or hotels and drive back to the venue to collect their bike, or may ride their bike back downtown, which is approximately three miles. Just please note that bike must be re removed from transition area by 1.10 p.m. at the very latest on Saturday, so we may re-sticker for Sunday's race. For sprint distance, parking will be free and open to all people after 11.30 a.m. Athletes may either take the shuttle back to the parking area or hotels, or and drive back to the venue or ride their bike back to downtown, which is approximately three miles. This outlines what I just discussed. Um, so pick up, this is the Hilton downtown Cleveland located here. So this shuttle bus will run on Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. as well as Saturday and Sunday beginning at 4 o'clock a.m. This is the North Coast Harbor lot, which I mentioned, so athletes and volunteers may park here and shuttle buses will be lined up here just north of First Energy Stadium with overload parking located in the West Third Street lot. The open water swim competition is new this year. It'll take place on Friday, August 9th at 11 o'clock a.m. Packet pickup specifically for open water swim will be at 9.30 a.m. until 10.45 a.m. We'll begin staging athletes at 10.45. They will then need to cross under the swim start arch and we'll pre-stage those athletes. Again, you must have pre-registered for this event. Anyone showing up to do the swim course familiarization will need to stay behind the swim start arch until after the open water swim competition begins and we will get you into the water no later than 11.20 for your 11.20 to 1 o'clock uh, swim familiarization. For road closures, I won't run through all these. These are also posted on the website, but on both days it will be beginning at 4.30 a.m. So just be aware as you're navigating to the venue, again, those that have pre-purchased parking passes you must be in no later than 6 o'clock a.m. For sticker placement, so these are some items that you'll receive in your race packet. So the top one, uh, which lists Quintana Roo, that will go around your bike seat post. You'll also re receive helmet label as well as bag check. The bag check, we will offer a bag check tent, um, so no ba bags may be left in transition. So upon check-in to transition, and I'll cover this in a few slides as well, Bring in all of your race essentials. You'll also be given, given a clear plastic bag at packet pickup. Everything not staying in, in transition needs to go into the clear plastic bag. Bag check sticker on there. If you can't find your bag check sticker, we can sharpie that upon checking your bag into the bag check tent, and then that will be held in the secure area until the race is complete. You will then visit the bag check tent upon the completion of your race, show your your wristband, show your tattoo to prove that it is you and you are picking up your specific bag check bag and we'll return that back to you. For your bib, this must be worn on the run. It does not need to be worn on the bike. Sticker placement, as I touched upon, this is a visual. So again, the top sticker should go around your seat post. You also receive some helmet label stickers as well. Um, you need to wear a minimum of two of these with one going on the front of your helmet and one going on to on the left, left side of your helmet. For body marking and timing chips, so race tattoos will be issued at packet pickup. Everyone will receive a quad set of tattoos. So these must go on the outside of each bicep and the outside of each calf. Upon check-in to transition, you will then be written your race number on the back of one calf. I'm sorry, your race age 
on the back of each calf as of 1231 of 2019. Timing chip, again, handed out at packet pickup. You will have a separate chip if, chip if you are racing both distances. Please make sure you don't forget them on race day. My recommendation is to always put these on the night before, just so when you wake up bright and early, you don't forget to grab your timing chip prior to race morning. The rules briefing will be on Friday, August 9th at 2 o'clock p.m. Um, Deb Wilson will be leading this, as well as myself, and USADA, United States Anti-Doping Agency, will also be giving a quick presentation on the front end. Bike check-in. For Olympic distance, it will be mandatory on Friday, August 9th. Sprint distance mandatory check-in for Sunday's race on Saturday, August 10th. On Friday, for Olympic distance only, it will be 10 a.m. until 6. For sprint distance on Saturday, it will be from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. You must have your wristband and bike number, and bike support will be provided by Bike Authority. Detailed bag check procedure, I just covered all of this, so I'll leave this slide up for another few seconds. Um, biggest thing to remember is that only race essentials are allowed in transition. You may not mark your rack with a balloon or any other additional marking. You leave your race essentials in TA, you put them in the, in the 18 by 24 University Hospitals branded bag, check that at the bag check tent, and then you can retrieve that post-race. Race morning, again, we've covered this, but just as a reminder, TA will be open from 4.45 to 6.40 a.m. with no bags being allowed left in transition during the race. The bag check tent that I've touched upon and then the swim warm-up will be limited to one to two waves prior to your prescribed start time. Just outlining the venue very quickly, so the two times you transition zone is located here. Swim exit here, athletes exiting the swim will Swim in under a flyover, and once you hit the parking lot, this will be carpeted prior to your entrance to transition. On the east and northeast side of this map is parking for only those that have pre-purchased parking passes. Number two is the race registration tent. One is where bike support will be located as their main hub, and then we'll also have bike support located within the two times you transition zone. Four is volunteer and information, just west of that is expo. Six and seven are officials and results tent, with three being the post-race food tent. Five will be the recovery tent, which you can gain access to upon completion of your race. Eight is medical. Nine is VIP and hospitality, with 10 being honors club. And then 11 will be the, the bleachers and video board with the beer garden located directly east uh, of Lake Erie in the water. This is another detailed version of the enhanced venue map. Olympic distance transition, so just walking through the ins and outs. So swim start will be an in-water start at approximately waist deep between two large yellow banana buoys. You'll then swim the prescribed 1500 meter course. Upon exiting the water, you have a, about a 400 meter run to transition. You'll go under the flyover as noted here. Upon entering TA, you will bike out. Um, so we have shifted the run course this year for Olympic distance to be a one lap course. So as you exit, the mount line will be located right here at this location. You'll then make a right-hand turn. Athletes will be up on their bike going up the on-ramp. This will be split between bike and run traffic. Athletes going out on the run will have approximately 8 feet, with the remaining 12 feet being for bike athletes starting the, starting the bike. You'll then complete the bike course. As you're coming back into the venue, the dismount line will be located and signified by volunteers, signage, uh, a dismount line on the ground, as well as a large bike dismount inflatable arch where you'll come in, and then you'll exit on the run. Once you come exit on the run, upon locating and touching the top of the bike on-ramp, you'll make a 180-degree turn. You'll go down the shoreway, come back, you'll complete the remainder of your run through Upper Edgewater over the flyover to the finish. Swim distance course, so it's a one-lap course as of Yesterday, the water temperature was 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, it'll be an in-water start with yellow triangular buoys being your turn buoys and your orange round buoys being your sight buoys. Very important, you can swim to either side of the orange sight buoys. You must go around the yellow triangular buoys on your right shoulder. Please make sure you review the maps for the exact course. There'll be plenty and enhanced support on water with both boats, lifeguards, and kayaks, and please make sure you're at, you at swim start 20 minutes prior to your scheduled start time. Olympic distance swim course. So we've added additional sight buoys this year. So the way this will lay out from a start perspective, so the swim start arch will be located here where the white arrow is. We'll let two waves in. The wave that is starting will 
line up in the swim start area, again, waist deep between two large yellow banana buoys. The wave following them will be warming up in the swim, loca swim warm-up location. We will have four small orange bomber buoys located. You must stay within this area. As soon as the wave that's in swim start starts, there'll be an announcement for those that are in the warm-up area to slide over. The next wave will then go under the start arch and slide over to the swim warm-up area as well. The way the buoys are seen here, they'll be placed approximately every 150 meters. So this will be additional buoys than we had last year. There'll also be an additional site buoy between the orange yellow triangular buoys. If on race morning, once these buoys are set, we certainly have the ability to add additional site buoys if need be. At swim exit, this will be signified by a large black Roka inflatable. We'll also inflate two large orange, they'll be the same looking buoys as the site buoys, but we'll place two large orange buoys at swim exit for additional sighting. You'll then exit the swim under the flyover into TA. The bike course is a one lap 40K course. It's a combination of a flat course with some gradual climb, a couple steep descents and technical once off the shoreway. The, close is the course is fully closed to traffic with no bottle exchange and there will be USAT officials on course. The Olympic distance bike, so walking through this, so you'll exit TA, you'll make a right hand turn onto the shoreway. You'll make a 180 on at the intersection of the shoreway and West Boulevard. You go under an overpass. You continue down the shoreway until you exit onto the marginal, which is the south marginal, a right-hand turn on the east 55th, and then a right-hand turn on the St. Clair with a left-hand turn on the east 40th. Once you get onto Chester, we will occupy the entire westbound lanes. So this will be split strictly for bike tra traffic. So you'll have a lane and a half going east direction. You'll then travel eastbound in the westbound lanes. This will be clearly marked with traffic control devices and cones. A left, a left onto East 105th Street where you go through the Cultural and Botanical Gardens. You'll make a 180 just prior to the intersection of Superior Avenue on MLK Drive. Back down, you'll return the exact same way. You'll make that right-hand turn onto St. Clair, left-hand turn onto East 55th with the left hand on the Cleveland Memorial Shoreway. You'll then go, um, you'll exit the, the exit ramp where you'll enter the north marginal and then onto the shoreway continuing back. There'll be a small descent off the exit ramp and then the dismount line, as I mentioned, will be located here looking at the northwest corner of this map. The run, lap, the run course is a one lap 10K. It'll be a full closure. There will be portions where this section is split with the bike course and this will be clearly delineated by cones. We'll offer seven, eight stations with Gatorade Endurance Formula, water, ice, and science and sport gels, and there'll be volunteers and police on course. So walking through the run course, so again, a one lap 10K course. So you exit TA up the on-ramp, which will be split with the bike. You'll make a 180 where you'll then hit your first aid station. This section where there'll be bike course and run course traffic, this will be split. So you'll be traveling down the run course on the westbound lanes of the shoreway. You'll make your 180 where you hit your aid station, come back. So this will be split delineating two-way run traffic. Once you get to the lo this location here where you made that first 180, this is where it'll begin one-way run traffic. So you'll have one-way run traffic. You'll go over the overpass, so bikes will be going under you. You make the right-hand turn onto Lake Avenue, continue down Lake Avenue, where you'll make your 180 just prior to the intersection of Lake Avenue and West 10th. You'll then come back. You'll navigate through Upper Edgewater Park, where you hit a series of aid stations. Upon following through this, you'll have a descent down a hill. You'll then go over the flyover directly to the finish. For sprint distance transition, this lays out the exact same way, so I won't go through all of this. The one difference you'll notice is for run out, you will not be making a 180 like Olympic distance did. Once you come up the on-ramp, you'll continue straight down to Cleveland Memorial Shoreway running in the westbound lane. So there'll be one-way bike traffic and one-way run traffic on those westbound lanes. Sprint distance very similar to Olympic with the exception of it's a 750 meter course. Again, orange buoys are sight buoys and you may swim to either side of the sight buoys. You must review, please, the master of the exact course. As it lays out for buoys, again, same start procedure. We'll have two site buoys prior to your first turn buoy. Between turn one and turn two, there'll be an additional site buoy. And then you're straight away to the finish line at swim exit, there'll be two orange buoys as well. The sprint bike course will be a one lap 20K course. Again, it's a flat course with a couple of gradual climbs. No bottle exchange and USAT officials will be on course. Walking through the sprint bike course. So you'll exit TA up the ramp. 
You'll then travel down, you'll make the 180 at the intersection of the Shoreway and West Boulevard. You'll go under an overpass, continuing down the Shoreway, you will exit at North Marginal. You'll continue down and you will do your 180 just prior to the intersection of the, of the South Marginal at East 49th. You'll then travel back down that roadway, you'll then go around the lollipop here, back onto the shoreway, and then the, the slight descent prior to approaching transition. Again, the, the dismount location will be located at the exact same point as it was the prior day. Run course for sprint distance will be a one lap 5K course. This will be a full closure with four aid stations, again, offering Gatorade endurance formula, water, ice, and science and sport gels with volunteers and police on course. Sprint distance run, so walking through this, so you'll exit TA up the ramp, you'll hit your first aid station, continuing down with this shared with the bike course. Again, you will have approximately eight to 10 feet moving westbound on the shoreway until it begins one way run traffic so it won't be split with the bike. You go over the overpass, bikers will be coming down under you, down Lake Avenue. You're gonna cross the intersection of Lake and West and you'll do a 180 into Upper Edgewater Park where you'll hit aid station two, Continuing down A station three and four, and then over the flyover to the finish. Eight stations will be approximately every 0.75 miles of the run course, offering Gatorade and endurance formula, science and sport gels, water and ice. Again, no eight stations on the bike course. For transition, mountain dismount lines will be clearly marked with bike racks being individually numbered. We'd ask for you prior to race start that you rack your bike by the seat upon entering after the bike portion, you may rack by either your bars or by your seat. Again, only race essentials should be allowed in transition. Any bags that are left in TA will be removed. Race morning and prior to race morning, as well as on course, bike support will be provided by Bike Authority for basic bike needs. Finish line, water, ice, Gatorade, and endurance formula will be provided, as well as medical support provided by university hospitals. All athletes will receive a finisher medal, post-race food, Unofficial results and penalties will be posted in the expo area with individual unofficial results and printouts being available. All Olympic distance results are final after 12 to 10 p.m. on Saturday and sprint distance results final after 12.05 p.m. on Sunday. The award ceremony. So the town hall meeting will be held on Saturday from 4.15 to 5 o'clock p.m. with the Olympic distance awards taking place from 5.15 to 6.45 with the top 10 awarded per age group. Sprint Distance National Championship Award Ceremony will be at Cleveland Public Auditorium on Sunday from 1 o'clock to 2.30 p.m. with the top five awarded per age group. To be eligible for awards and titles, you must be a U.S. citizen or must be a U.S. national, national which is someone who has resided in the U.S. for three consecutive years and has not re represented another country in competition in the previous year. For public auditorium parking, so this holds true for Friday's race briefing and presentation by AJ, as well as Saturday and Sunday. So this will be at 500 Lakeside Avenue, 44114. There's separate, several parking garages in the area that have varying prices. There's also street parking available. This is just one block east of our host hotel, the Hilton Cleveland downtown within walking distance of other hotels downtown also. Beer garden and food trucks. So the official USA Triathlon beer garden of the Toyota Age Group Nationals will be at Edgewater Park directly west of the expo area. They'll also be offering non-alcoholic beverages, food, and then a great view via the food trucks. You must bring your photo ID with date of birth if you do plan on consumption. Please remember to drink responsibility, and you can also stop by race morning to get coffee as well. The beach house overlooks the venue, um, so this will be offering food and drink as well, as well as shaded area and aerial views of the venue. The Sunset Sprint 5K, this will be put on by the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission. This will be Friday, August 9th from 6.30 p.m., which will be the race start. The cost for August 6th will be 30 for adults, 20 for ages 14 and under, and on race day, prices will increase by $5. Awards will be awarded to the top three overall male and female and top three overall male and female in each age group. For Team USA for 2020 in Edmonton, Canada, for Olympic and sprint distance, you must go to the award ceremony to claim your spot. For Olympic distance qualification, it will be top 18 in each age group, rolling down all the way to 30th place. Applying the age up rule, you must be, again, present at the award ceremony to accept your slot, and failure to accept your slot at the ceremony will, will result in a forfeiture of your slot. Additionally, rankings, the top 20 athletes per age group, in your rankings as of 1231 will also qualify. Those top two are offered a spot pending availability on the roster rolling down to 20th. 
For sprint distance for worlds, there are two qualification paths. We'll allocate eight slots for women in each age group and eight slots for men in each age group at the national championship. Um, additionally, we'll also offer 10 slots at the draft legal sprint national championships held in Tippy, Arizona on Saturday, August 16, 2019. After claiming those pass down spots, you must meet these minimum age requirements as well, which, which are listed here. Lastly, we want to thank all of our partners, um, Toyota, who is our title sponsor for the event, as well as all of our additional partners, travel partners, as well as suppliers. If you do have additional questions, please feel free to send those to national events at usatrothon.org. If you are on site and do have additional questions, those can be answered at the volunteer tent. Any pertinent information will be listed on a whiteboard as well as water temperature. The final water temperature will be taken one hour prior to race start time for that official ter determination whether it's a wetsuit league or not. That concludes the webinar. Again, thank you athletes for signing up, registering. We look forward to a, a great, safe, and successful race, and we'll see you in Cleveland. Thank you, everyone.